What's up, Flick fans? We're back with some more awards coverage. This one means a little bit more to me personally because I actually had a hand in voting for the Critics' Choice nominees, and I will have a hand in voting for the winner. Y'all just let me know what you want to win. Just kidding. This is my vote. The Critics' Choice Association is great. I'm about to look at the nominees that they sent me via email. I have taken a peek at Best Picture, so I won't be as shocked there. But let's start with Best Score. And I'm looking for the films that I voted for first. And my votes were The Batman, Babylon, and The Fablemans. And it looks like all three are there, along with Hilder's nomination for Women Talking, double nomination. They're well-deserved. I thought both were uh, absolutely great. And then... Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, one that I came this close to voting for. If you guys didn't see my live stream on Saturday, uh, I vote for three. Everyone votes for three. They compile them all together and come up with five or six for most of the categories. And this one, we do have six. What's the Oscar overlap going to be like? Well, I'd like to see the Batman have an opportunity for best score at the Oscars. That would be great. But Justin Horowitz and John Williams... To me, they feel like favorites in this category for the Academy Awards, but because you have someone with a double nomination here, maybe not at the Oscars, but uh, Hildur, she won it for the Joker, and I have a good feeling uh, Tar or Women Talking is going to be in competition, so this one may, may actually be a little more difficult than people expect, but I think five of these six will inevitably get an Oscar nomination, so some good overlap there, uh, and you can't count out the Pinocchio score. Next up, the nominees for Best Song. We once again have Carolina from Where the Crawdads Sing. I am starting to take that contender very serious after the last two days. Ciao, Papa. I almost voted for Chow Papa. I ended up going for uh, This is a Life from Everything Everywhere All at Once, and I expected it to probably not get in there, but it was one of my favorites, so I had to give it an opportunity. Hold my hand, Top Gun. Lift me up in there so you have Rihanna and Lady Gaga in competition. Natu Natu from RRR. I love seeing that. And New Body Rumor from White Noise. I don't know why I didn't think about this one. It was a song created uh, for this original movie. I even got to see the composer and the gentleman who wrote the song in New York. And that scene is one of the best scenes in the movie. It takes place at the end. So it's really nice to see that slide in there. To me, and I'm not doing my predictions just yet. You guys know that. But I see a few contenders here. I see Lady Gaga and Rihanna maybe going head to head. But do not overlook Ciao, Papa. But also, don't overlook RRR. This one could be in contention, so a lot of great choices here. So far, so good with the Critics' Choice Awards. Best Foreign Language Film, I expected all three of mine to get on there with Flying Colors, All Quiet on the Western Front, Decision to Leave, and RRR. Close, a movie that I came one ace of putting on my list. I am so glad it got a nomination. Argentina, 1985. And then the one movie that didn't make it yesterday in the Golden Globes, Bardo, maybe I expected it over in Argentina 1985, but we have six here. That is probably the best of the best. To me, the contenders, the competitors are Decision to Leave, All Quiet, and RRR. Let's see which one takes it home. Animated feature, my three at the top, just because it's alphabetical order. The other two, Turning Red, a movie I expected would probably be on there. And Wendell and Wild. Now that one is a little shocking. If I had to choose any of the Netflix animated films between The Sea Beast, Apollo 10 and a half, and Wendell and Wild, Wendell and Wild would be an easy third place. While I love the studio and I love the inclusion of Jordan Peele, I just didn't respond as heavy to Wendell and Wild. I guess I didn't respond as heavy to Turning Red, but the first three are fantastic. You guys are getting my Puss in Boots review very soon. It's going to be hard to beat Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, though. That is a game. Well, yeah, that's Netflix, too. I take back what I said. Pinocchio is also a Netflix movie. So we only have one uh, Pixar and Disney film here, and that's Turning Red. That is a rare occasion for an awards show, and I have a feeling it's going to be very similar when we get to Oscar time. Best comedy. I don't see it. I'm very disappointed. Cha-Cha Real Smooth did not get into best comedy because it is, it's a romantic comedy. It is, at its core, a comedic film, and I think it's better than most of the movies on this list. But Banshees of Inishirin and Everything Everywhere All at Once got in there. I thought Bros was a really funny film. The other movie that I was going to vote for was The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. That was the film that I almost put on my list. Great to see. I enjoyed Triangle of Sadness again. 
I'm not in the camp of thinking it is one of the definitive best movies of the year. I enjoyed it. It's nice to see it get some love. There are some great moments in that movie. So best comedy, obviously Glass Onion, really funny movie. So I think we, I keep saying they, I think we did a good job of putting uh, movies on the list that are maybe not pure comedies, but are comedy forward. Best hair and makeup, my votes were The Batman, The Whale, and Everything Everywhere All at Once. All three made it on there. We also have Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, which absolutely deserves it, and Elvis. So this, these are like the six movies that will be in contention for the Oscars. Which one's not making it? I love this list. I think this is the six best movies of the year when it comes to best hair and makeup. So, so far, these categories crushing it. The question is, who's going to win? Again, I'm not giving my predictions yet. I, I have a feeling, you know, prosthetics, they're a big deal in the industry, but critics also look at it as a pretty big deal. So, The Whale, The Batman, are we really going to take The Batman seriously? Yes. Did you see Colin Farrell? in that movie so that may end up being my vote i don't know yet we'll see costume design where are my three at i, I had black panther wakanda forever babylon and the woman king nice to see all three on there the other films obviously glass onion everything everywhere and elvis again i think they're absolutely nailing it not one movie on here i would argue being a part of costume design it's going to be hard to overcome black panther and the woman king you look at their outfits. You look at the way that they integrate these costumes into the story, how they serve such a big purpose. And I guess you could say that as well for everything, everywhere, all at once, because going to the different universes and having to, uh, I mean, that's a big deal, but it's going to be hard to beat the Woman King or Black Panther Wakanda forever. The question is which one? And honestly, I have no clue. Ruthie Carter, she is beloved. Uh, so maybe that's the route everyone goes. I just don't know. Best visual effects what a great category. Avatar, The Batman, Top Gun, my votes. It was hard not to put Black Panther on that list, uh, but it's absolutely deserving of being on this list. You look at the budget for everything, everywhere, all at once, and what they were able to do with the VFX in that film on that budget, it's remarkable. And then obviously RRR. I mean, just the scene with the animals and he's jumping out of the... Th uh, come on. Some of the coolest VFX of the year. I guess you could argue that Doctor Strange deserved to be in the conversation. Uh, what are some other movies here? Jurassic World? Yeah, I mean, I would make the argument that Jurassic World deserved to be here. You know, which movie would I put it over? I'm not sure. I didn't like Jurassic World. I, I didn't think it was a good movie. But we're not talking about the film. We're talking about the visual effects. And you have dinosaurs... Yeah, I feel like maybe it deserved to be on here. But don't ask me which one I'm taking. I'm, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Production design, Babylon, Avatar, Black Panther. Those were my votes. You also have the Fablemans, and yeah, the production design in that film. Beautiful, everything, everywhere, all at once. And then Elvis, and Elvis is one, you know, it doesn't come to my mind immediately, but when you think back on the film and the Vegas setting and uh, all of his different concerts, yeah, I could definitely see why Elvis is on uh, this list. To me... It's going to come down to, you know, I've seen a lot of people argue, well, Avatar The Way of Water, a lot of it is visual effects creating the production design, but there's also production design involved, and you can't argue uh, that the backdrops and just uh, the way that that's handled in that movie are absolutely gorgeous. I see Babylon being very competitive in this category. I mean, genuinely, you watch Babylon, you are in awe. I mean, they recreate film sets in that movie, or create film sets in that movie, and the production design there is fantastic. But Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, again, the way they do Wakanda here, so beautiful. So I really love this list. I am loving these nominees so far. Best editing, my votes were Top Gun Maverick, Everything Everywhere All at Once, obviously, and Decision to Leave. Decision to Leave is not on this list. I, I'm going to argue this until the day that I die. Decision to Leave is one of the best put together movies I've seen in years. Just watch the film. And I guess you could chalk some of this up to cinematography. I get it. We'll see what cinematography has to hold. But right now, I am baffled that Decision to Leave didn't make it here. It's like, did we forget that that movie existed? Obviously not. It's in foreign language film. I watched the, I watched the movie and I'm just... How do you not nominate that? Because it's not flashy, it's not showy, it's slower. I, I get it. But at the same time, no way I wouldn't put it in this category. Uh, to me, the one I would take off 
to put Decision to Leave in is Elvis. I believe Elvis is a very well-made movie. It's very well put together. It's flashy. It's showy. I think that's the reason Decision to Leave is not that. Uh, but it just kind of baffles me that out of six possibilities, it didn't make it in. Again, I get Avatar. I definitely get Babylon. Um, it's going to be hard to take Tar off that list, but Decision to Leave deserved to be on there, in my opinion. I will fight that. Don't see Decision to Leave on there as well. My three votes were All Quiet on the Western Front. Don't see that. The Batman. Don't see that. And Top Gun Maverick, which was obvious. I am really bummed with this category. Look, Empire of Light is very well made. I, I think the cinematography is really good. Roger Deakins does a heck of a job. He's a great cinematographer. The movie itself, I didn't really respond to. Uh, but again, we're looking at cinematography. I would have definitely taken that out, though, for the Batman or All Quiet on the Western Front. To me, I guess the same could be said with the Fablemans. Again, we're talking about the best of the best. The Fablemans uh, looks beautiful. Babylon looks beautiful. Tar looks beautiful. Avatar you could chalk that up to about five different things. Visual effects, production design, cinematography, uh, boom, boom, boom. I get it, but at the same time, I watch the Batman, I look at it compared to other comic book movies, and frankly, it's not even close. That's why I would argue that on the list, and then All Quiet on the Western Front. I still think it's one of the best-looking movies of the year. It may be the best-looking movie of the year. It is not getting the love. Uh, it hurts me. It hurts me. Original screenplay, Banshees, Everything Everywhere, and Tar. Those were my three votes. I think they were absolutely getting in regardless. The other two, though, The Fablemans, I did not doubt that would get the nomination. To me, it was going to be between Triangle of Sadness, Babylon, After Sun, and After Sun got the nomination. And you know what? I agree with that. I love that After Sun got the nomination. It's a movie that, you know, I watched and I said, this is not going to be taken as seriously as maybe it should have. And I thought After Sun was a great film. I expected it to be like top tier A24 for me. It just fell short of that, but it's a beautiful film. More importantly, it's a beautiful screenplay. I am floored that Charlotte Wells got in for that. Awesome to see. Well-deserved. Love this category. Adapted screenplay, my votes were Women Talking, All Quiet, the whale. Again, All Quiet is getting no love today. Absolutely no love. I'm going to have to have a talk with some people. <laughs> hey, did you watch this movie? Living. Really good film. I get it. I would have put All Quiet in front of it. Nice to see it on there, though. Glass Onion. That one was pretty obvious. I figured that was getting in. And she said, I, you know, walking out of She Said, I said, that is guaranteed a screenplay nomination. It's not been quite getting the love that I expected so far this awards season. Maybe this could be where the tide is turning. If it's going to get in anywhere, it's going to get an adapted screenplay. Uh, so, solid category. We're not thrilled about a couple of snubs here, but uh, solid. Best Young Actor Actress, my vote was Eden Dambrine, I believe is the name, in Close. Little disappointed that Close didn't get any representation here, but I get it. Bella Ramsey was great in Catherine Called Birdie. Uh, Banks in Armageddon Time, Sadie in The Whale, Jalen Hall in Till. I love that. It was on my list, on my notes, and I thought about it, and then part of me almost went with Jalen Hall, but I, I love the fact that uh, that he got in and Frankie Carrillo from After Sun. That was my other vote. Again, After Sun getting the representation. So, solid category. Really good performers here. You're looking at the future. Ensemble, Glass Onion, The Fablemans, Everything Everywhere. Those were my three votes. Those were obvious. I almost went with the Banshees of Inish and Great to see them in this category. The Woman King, an amazing cast. Women Talking, an amazing cast. So I have no real issues with this category. All great ensembles. To me, the front runners are Glass Onion and maybe Everything Everywhere All at Once. Just because you look at everyone that's going to be getting a nomination there. You have a lot of supporting, best actress, best actor. So uh, those are the two, in my opinion. But you can't look past anyone in this category. Sporting Actress, my votes went to Jesse Buckley, Angela Bassett, and Stephanie Hsu. And we got a double Everything Everywhere uh, nomination here for Jamie Lee Curtis and Stephanie Hsu, so that's great to see. I didn't know if that would happen. Again, we have six in this category. I thought if it would happen, maybe for Women Talking, regardless. Carrie Condon got in, Janelle Monet, and uh, five of these six, if you had to ask me, are getting that coveted Oscar nomination. If I had to guess, they're going to lean more Jamie Lee Curtis. She's been campaigning more. You have more of that generation of voters over Stephanie's performance and everything everywhere. I prefer Stephanie's. Uh, regardless, I, I love this category. Great category. I didn't know Bassett would get in. 
to be honest with you, but this tells me that other people were kind of in my boat. Supporting actor Paul Dano, Brennan Gleeson, and Kihi Kwan. Those were my three votes. Judd Hirsch, you have double Fablements. Don't know if that's going to happen at the Oscars. You also have double Banshees with Barry, who gave an amazing performance. So double Fablements, double Banshees. Okay, all right. Brian Tyree Henry in Causeway. I thought the movie was okay. I thought Brian Tyree Henry was outstanding. So another category that I'm really impressed with. I'm glad they went double in both of those films. I think Brendan gets it over Barry for Banshees with the Oscars. And I have a feeling they're going to go Paul Dano over Judd Hirsch. But Judd Hirsch was really, really good. So yeah, I, I like how this is shaping up. Best Actress, how do you mess this up if you're the Critics' Choice Association? And they didn't. Thank goodness. Kate Blanchett, Michelle Williams, uh, Michelle Yeoh, uh, Daniel Deadweiler. Yes, thank you. After yesterday's snub, I was pissed. Not pissed anymore. Margot Robbie in Babylon, deserving. Viola Davis in The Woman King, deserving. So these may just be the, the six best actress performances of the year. I'm not kidding. Unless I'm forgetting someone. But uh, it's going to be hard to pick a winner here. If I had to guess right now, before my prediction video, it's going to be Kate Blanchett, but you can't look past uh, Michelle Yeoh and Danielle Deadweiler. Actor, my three votes are obviously, to me, three of the best performances of the year. Austin Butler, Colin Farrell, Brendan Fraser, uh, Paul Mescal from After Sun. Again, After Sun being represented. Great to see. Bill Nighy from Living. I thought maybe there was a possibility of Will Smith sliding in there, Diego Calva, which kind of surprises me there. I thought Calva was uh, really, really good in Babylon, so a little surprising not over Bill Nighy. Tom Cruise, man. It's nice to see Tom Cruise. Obviously wasn't favored with the Golden Globes. I think for what this movie was, for the purpose he served in this film, and for learning how to fly jets, I mean... Come on. People are overlooking that. They're just like, ah, oh, you know, Cruz was being Cruz. He learned how to fly a freaking jet. He already knew how to fly a plane and knew how to fly a helicopter. He learned how to fly a jet. How do you overlook that? They didn't, thankfully. Oh, there's 10 here. And I'm going to take a guess. Before I even look down that list, I'm going to take a guess and say decision to leave was snubbed. What do you think? Yep. Decision to leave was How do you nominate, first of all, there's 10. That's a lot of Best Director nominees. <laughs> like, were there, were there like nine ties? Like, I'm just, I mean, obviously it would be less than that. But what, what is this? Why? <laughs> Why? Okay. Well, how, this is my luck. How did the person I voted for not get in when there's 10 nominees? Like, what the freaking <laughs> My three votes were obviously Park Chan Wook, who didn't get in, James Cameron for Avatar The Way of Water, and The Daniels. I also would have loved to see Todd Field get in there, and he did. As Sarah Polly getting some love for Women Talking, Spielberg, obviously, for The Fablemans. Do I see S.S. Rajamuli in there for RRR? And I told you I took a sneak peek at Best Picture, and I know RRR gets the Best Picture now, but that is really cool to see. Really cool for fans of that movie, and for maybe that slight and i'm doing my oscar predictions next couple of days on this channel so make sure you're subscribed but maybe a little possibility of a best picture bump for rrr it's really nice to see that i think martin mcdonough deserves a nomination i think gina prince blythewood at least within the 10 deserves a nomination it's hard to choose Who's going to get the win here? It really is. I would say Spielberg is the favorite. I would not count out Martin McDonough. I would not count out the Daniels. I would not count out James Cameron or Todd Field. Those are my five out of the ten. Best picture. We have 11 nominees here. Obviously, I voted for All Quiet on the Western Front. I stand by that. I think it's better than most of the movies on this list. Uh, but the other films, Top Gun, Maverick, Everything Everywhere, Banshees, and Tar. Nice to see them represented. Honestly, it's nice seeing Avatar on here. I think it's a huge step up from the first. We'll talk about Babylon a little later this week. Elvis. I knew Elvis would get the nom again. I have issues with Elvis, but I understand why it was such an experience for a lot of people. Uh, Glass Onion. The sequel to Knives Out, so you have a sequel on there. R, R, R with a Best Picture nomination, man. I'm telling you right now, we cannot overlook this film. I understand it's not going to get the international push with that category at the Oscars. They chose another film, so it can't get nominated, but 
I'm not going to count it out for Best Picture. I'm also not counting out Tar, and I'm not counting out Top Gun. I don't care what the comments in my TikTok say. Hey, uh, Top Gun. Yeah, Top Gun. Yeah, you like Top Gun? It happens every year. And, and there are a lot of people who have stood by that opinion for a long time. I get it. But there's an overwhelming number of people now calling the best movies of the year overrated. I'm just like, where? Where do they come? And it happens every single year. Whatever wins Best Picture this year, the only time that's never happened was Parasite. But even then, some people were saying Parasite's overrated. Uh, but for the most part, I'm curious to see if more of them come out of their caves. I like this category. I think most of the movies on here deserve to be on here. Obviously, I would have put All Quiet on the Western Front. I would have put Decision to Leave over uh, more than a few of these, but it's really good. It's a nice set of films, movies that I believe span from solid to amazing. So what's going to win at this point? I can't tell you what's going to win because I don't know. I would assume everything everywhere being so critically beloved uh, that has the edge over some of the others, but you can't look past Spielberg. You can't look past Avatar and you can't look past Top Gun. I don't think it gets critics choice, but I'm talking later on in awards season. So those are my thoughts on the Critics' Choice nominations. Again, they mean more to me because I had a hand in voting. And we're going to come back and do some predictions for the Golden Globes and the Critics' Choice Awards. If you're not subscribed, that would be awesome. If you want to drop this video a like, that would help out this channel immensely. My review for Avatar The Way of Water on this channel as of yesterday. And I'll have some predictions for the Oscars coming over the next couple of days. Thanks, guys. See you soon.